What's up guys, this is RG giving you another high definition broadcast. As you can see, we're here on Unison League, it's this way. And uh, it will actually be the long-awaited Lancer class breakdown and guide. So let's go ahead and get into the class of the Lancer. So I can show you exactly what I'm talking about when I am talking about the skills and the gear that you need. The first thing you need to know about the Lancer is having five lances or scythes is imperative to becoming a high level GBG or successful in any endeavor as the Lancer. Uh, Min-maxing the Lancer requires these weapons because the pole up, which is strangely worded uh, to say the least, increases the attack of lances and scythes gear by 3%. Um, it does have a bunch of these all the way, you know, there's a lot of poles going up here. Uh, and, uh, you know, pole up level 3, blah blah blah, uh, not night splits, but there's pole ups all over the place. So, uh, this is just like the mage tree where you need uh, 5 staffs to be uh, effective. Actually, you know, the mage can actually go, uh, like, 1, um, cleric weapon just to be healing, so let's just forget about the mage right now, we're talking about the lancer. So, you know, in any class situation, most of the times, you will have to have, uh, you know, the lance or scythe or the specific weapon uh, designated for that class for them to be successful in most situations. But in Lancer situation, this is very, very imperative, just like how the archer is. So, the reason that uh, having these lances also is, is very imperative is the skills that are on them. So any class having the skills that, that is uh, geared towards their class on the weapon, it's like you have to have that to be successful. Um, so let's go ahead and get into these skills that I want you guys to get and it'll also tie into the weapons uh, and weapon skills that you want on your weapons. The first skill that you definitely guaranteed have to have is Sting. The reason that you want Sting is because it's going to combo with your other abilities and it is a, a bonus to break. Now, a lot of you Lancers might be thinking, Sting, why are you getting Sting? Why don't you just get Savage Sting? Well, let me answer that question for you now in that you also get Savage Sting. So you're going to have both of these skills equipped in your GVG to be a maximized player. Um, somebody might be saying, well, why are you getting two Stings? Because not only is um, it really good to have, uh, like, the sting and then follow it up with the savage sting because it actually has a combo effect here it's because the bonus chance to break on both of them um a lot of people might be saying you know oh it's, it's, you just you just need one no you need two because bonus chance to break is incredibly effective for not just you but also for anybody that's in your group that is also doing dps to the same target um and also it combos with the with the previous skill so uh, anytime you're in GVG uh, the first thing you want to do is save up enough cost to do sting and savage sting back to back you kind of want to wait a little bit um, so you hit that uh, sting on them then you're gonna go with savage sting you don't hit savage sting first because savage sting actually does not combo with the sting ability so um, you have to use uh, sting first before savage sting because as you can see this one when used after pierce, so, um, and this one is when used after sting. Um, so, you just gotta make sure that you have two of those abilities equipped, and then that will be optimized. The third ability that you definitely wanna have is, uh, Dragon Thrust. Now, the reason I'm, we're doing Dragon Thrust is because we both, we have Sting and Savage Sting, and this actually combos with both Sting and Savage Sting. It also combos with Pierce, but you don't need to have Pierce because we have Sting and Savage Sting equipped. They are a little bit higher damage, and they uh, do the same uh, effect of breaking. So, the reason I would say Dragon Thrust instead of the next skill I'm going to talk about is because of the 40% uh, Paralyzed chance. Because the uh, Paralyzed is is so so good for uh, a GVG situation. Um, just think about if you paralyze, say, a mage, you will be literally the mage either has to cure himself or have the bishop cure him because if he uses a meteor on and he's paralyzed, the cooldown on meteor is 25 seconds. You've effectively nullified a huge amount of his DPS and 
uh, it's not even um, gonna take off the paralyzed. So he can literally be spamming all of his skills, and all of his skills go on cooldown, and he hasn't used any of them. So uh, paralyzed is very, very good, and uh, you you definitely want to have an increased chance of uh, making the mage or whoever the highest DPS person is less effective. Now. Let's go ahead and talk about a option that you can also do besides the Dragon Thrust. However, this is the secondary option, not as good as Dragon Thrust. Knight's Blitz. Uh, this ability power is high damage, and it is something that's also uh, good, but it's, it's second tier compared to the Dragon Thrust. The reason being is it doesn't have any um, utility. And what I mean by utility is something that is actually coming after the ability power. It's just pure damage. And uh, it is high damage, however, so that's the reason I'm uh, me even mentioning it right now. Uh, another thing about uh, having Dragon Thrust instead of Night Splits is actually the, the cooldown is lower as well as the cost. So sometimes you're sitting there with like two or three cost less, and you, you're not going to be able to use Night Splits, but you could have used Dragon Thrust, and then somebody puts a meteor on top of you, and you're dead. And you could have used this, and but instead you had this equipped, and you're like, oh man, I you know I had like 13 costs, and now I have 14 costs, and now I'm dead. Whereas this one, you could have killed that person and instead of him meteoring you uh, to your death. So that's um, about it for that. Um, the fourth skill that you want to take is cheer, and this is something that you have to have in every GVG. Um, a lot of people say like uh, you don't need cheer or whatever that is. I, honestly, to me, cheer is probably one of the best skills in the game. Uh, that ability comes from just basically having it from level one. It's this right here, and it's just filling your units engage because actually this is a really highly based of a team game. And every time you get your unison, it's like uh, your unison is better than having like one more damage skill on your bar that you probably can't even use because your cost isn't going to allow it. So. Um, so that is pretty much um, my take on the Lancer skills. Um, so let's go ahead and get into like the gear. Um, as far as weapons go, you kind of want to cater to exactly what I was saying in terms of um, skills. So this is actually the best skill that you can have on the Lancer is Heart of the Spear. Um, Heart of the Spear XL obviously because it's going to uh, UR. And again, you need 5 UR Lancers. So let's go ahead and hit um, this gear. You're going to need 3 of these um, Sting skills at, uh, on your weapon and then you can go to Physical. Um, Testament. You can also do conversely two of these sting skills, and then you'll have the uh, the f three physical damage testament. I'll put a bunch of things uh, up here, and I'll, it'll show you like a bunch of different skills that you can have. But let me just talk about um, again the um, let's see the lance here, uh, Armageddon, um, the scythe actually. That actually gives pretty much everything um heart of the lancer heart of the spear heart of the rage pretty much all of the, everything so you have heart of the spear there and you have the uh, i think it's heart of the blitz which is going to give you the knight's blitz um and pretty much everything that you need so uh that's what you want to get obviously is the 50 medals uh and you want to you want to keep that in in the back of your mind um so with the Armageddon, you would probably have two still, Heart of the Spear, and then the Armageddon, and then two Physical Damage Testaments, okay? So if you can get that on your spears, that would be like muy bueno, very, very good. Uh, and um, and that's about it for the, for the min-maxing. Um, some people are might be saying, "Yo, I I don't have any of those uh, skills uh, I, on my weapon. I have like all like whatever in Rage Rust or whatever he has. Like I think it's like this, yeah. So you have all like you know Dragon, uh, not in Rage Rush, uh, Dragon Thrust, but in Rage Rush, which is like the AOE like ones. Um, that is unfortunate. However, you can actually still go Lancer as long as you have the five UR size. Um, but uh, it is not." It's not, you know, min-maxing, and it's not great for you to have that. So you still want to look for some more lances. However, uh, I would still not encourage you to go with Enraged Rush if you have all of those scythes. I would still uh, say go Sting, 
uh, Savage Sting, and then Dragon Thrust. Even if you, you don't have any skills that uh, use them, having the five UR lances is good enough, and then having those will also help. Um, you know, if you have a bunch of those lances, you might want to reconsider uh, going a different class or going uh, and re-rolling a bunch of more lances. It's like you just started, or like you're below level 70. I would probably re-roll it. Like if you're like 60 and you have like all lances that don't go with your character, you might want to re-roll and, and wait until you can keep rolling and get two to three UR lances that have like sting on them. So that's just an option. Um, if you have a bunch of lances that have Knight's Blitz on them, you can actually, like literally, you can go Knight's Blitz instead of Dragon Thrust. So, um, so if you only, if and only if you have more of these than you do, like say the Dragon Thrust or these Savage Stings, then you could go Knight's Blitz with two Savage Stings and a Cheer. Uh, and pretty much that's what you would want to go. Uh, so it is kind of um, dependent on what you get as well. I mean, every, everybody knows that what you get you should use uh, or reroll. So that's pretty much the rule. Um, I think uh, what I'll talk about now is PVE. Um, so in a PVE standpoint, where where you you need to like uh, survive pretty much uh, a lot of the times is you want to get survival skills so obviously uh, some survival skills that you can actually get would be in the soldier tree oh no don't change my class uh, and you can get this right here which is a very good skill for pretty much any class that wants to survive in PvE uh, it's heaven's breath and you can take that instead of cheer so you would have the two stings the uh, dragon thrust and the heaven's breath or two stings the night splits and the heaven's breath um, if you are doing some PvE where you need to burst, burst out your damage and you don't have to worry too much about uh, surviving, you can actually uh, go into the Mage Tree here and get Ether Exchange. That's going to be right here. So it's just going to take some of your HP and give you some ability power or ability cost. Uh, this can be used, say, in like Augment Quests, and um, if your opponent is. Uh, you know kind of weaker than you I wouldn't suggest doing this in a high level GVG but uh, like in a lower level GVG like say they're level 60s or something and you're like level 70 then this could be something useful for you t for taking down the timer and getting extra BP which is the battle points uh, for your GVG um, I'll put a bunch of stuff for PvE as well as the skills up here, so don't, don't worry about that too much. Uh, you can look it up again in a little bit. So, let's go ahead and get into the gearing. Um, as far as helmets and, uh, well, I guess I could talk about a allotment a little bit. Um, I would suggest, like, uh, kinda around where I'm at, like, kinda one 130 to 140 on weapon, 130 to 150 on your, uh, your monster and then your helmets and your armors you're going to want to balance that depending on what uh, you have but the mid max for the helmets and armors is three uh, reflect magic and then three physical damage reflect so magic damage reflect and physical damage effect are the best skills you can get you can get them on helms and armors so depending on what you have is where you're going to put your points into it if you have all armors and you have like say one helmet your skill allotment might look something like you know 20 uh you, you would want to put at least amount in helmet and you put more into armor uh if, conversely you'd have uh the if, if you have all helmets that go to ur and you don't have any armors or one armor then you'd have more in your helmet and then you put less in your armor so again using what you have available to you is what you have to do in this game so um that's just that's just how it how the dice rolls and how the cookie crumbles or whatever you like to say <laughs> so um, as far as your monsters go um, this is like widely debated what, what kind of you want what kind of monsters you would want to me I would say uh, if you're going Lancer and you have a good amount of helmets and armors there is a possibility for you to go five fire right now um, 
you could if you have a bunch of behemoths you can go five fire uh one thing i actually wanted to relate to you guys is that apollo is a monster event monster that's coming out it's not it's said that he's not going to be the next event monster as the next event monster is going to be a holy monster that does a reflect damage and heals or something and or takes off debuffs something like that and then the and then there's going to be a another event that's like a 25 ssr monster like how the monster is right now and then after that there's going to be the apollo event which is a ur monster uh, of fire that's a 30 cost all event monsters that are ur are 30 cost and they are they are actually uh reforged with one keyman and a uh, cast bosses i believe so i think that's how it works for all the ur uh event monsters so um so you want to get wait till that event monster i wouldn't suggest spending a bunch of gems on monsters if you don't have a lot of fire monsters right now um but you could if you have a bunch of gems to to blow uh but i honestly would wait to use my gems for ap recost uh refilling my ap cost for doing the apollo event that's coming up in the next few weeks so um that being said i would get about three apollos and if you didn't get if you didn't get this guy yet i get two of these um if you have two of them if you don't have two of these guys um or you don't have any of these guys there's actually a monster that's a um neutral monster you can get from this quest right here um it's actually a pretty hard quest to do but it's the ultimate uh, labyrinth of tartarus um you have to go with your friends it's a friend specific quest that's why it's locked for me even though i have a key uh and you get the keys from doing this quest uh the labyrinth of tartarus so uh i have actually acquired one of these monsters earlier today and i will show you that video later but this guy is an ssr um regular monster or neutral monster that is actually really good for lancers and i'll tell you exactly why the reason you would want to have three fire monsters and two of these neutral monsters is actually the stats that you see on the bottom here um the stats that a fire monster will always give you is right here um is the attack and uh defense uh, as you can see he has uh 108 and 110 attack the fire came in there all fire monsters will carry that attack and a defense and all of these um excuse me i just ate uh, neutral monsters will carry attack and magic defense so a lot of lancers out there are waiting for these uh neutral monsters like this guy here that are going to ur uh to actually come out um so like the jabberwocky and the um soul guy here and uh i don't know if heck is gonna go to uh ur but the that guy and um that's pretty much what you're looking for um since you have to wait for that though uh another alternative um is going three apollos or three fire monsters that you have laying around uh your best three fire monsters and your best two water monsters two water monsters that i would suggest getting uh been maxing is absaris or the um water valkyrie just because uh, the water valkyrie gives buffs and absaris is a 30 cost monster that has high um stats um you can also get this uh water monster if you have her uh this one oh, siren or whatever her name is i think but uh you know if you have her then you don't i mean if you have her or if you don't you know then then uh you can get her or not put her in but again uh let's i'll put it up all over here what kind of um uh stuff you can actually get and i'll i'll go ahead and do that so um i think that's about it for this one but uh yeah like i said fires three fires and two defensive monsters uh, you can go five fires you can go three fires and then the two neutral monsters three fires and two uh waters or four fires one water 
uh, depending on how much armor you guys have, like if you have a good amount of armor then you can just put as much damage in as possible. Um, one thing you have to watch out for in high level GVG is defense and magic defense being around at least above 20k, preferably to 30k. Like min max 30k magic defense and defense is preferable around the 30k area. As you can see I have a little bit of work to do. I have uh, 25k each, which is actually not bad but it's uh, still not the best I can have. As you can tell, uh, I'm still kind of sour about putting those nine points in the helmet. <laughs> so, um, I think that's it for this one, guys. Definitely um, like this if this helped you out. If this didn't help you out, you can uh, not like it. If you have any comments or would like to see something else, put it in the comments below. If I missed anything on the Lancers, definitely put it in the comments below as I am not a Lancer, but I have some good high level Lancer friends to help me out with it. And uh, I would appreciate all your input and what you think was would be good. So, um, I think that's it for this one guys. Please like and subscribe and uh, check my channel out. I will be coming out with that Labyrinth video and uh, I think that's it. So as always, thank you for watching and take it easy. Peace.